Hey guys, how are you today? All right, I was cleaning out some old crafty art show, craft show patterns out of a cabinet recently. Stuff that I am never going to make again and the patterns all needed to go away. I found though this particular pattern and I was going to toss it out and then one of my friends said, wait, I think that's one you should put on YouTube and I think I want to know how to make it and so here we are. <laughs> so this is a cell phone bag and I made hundreds if not thousands of these in my day. Um, this is a bag I designed way back in, I want to say 2007, maybe 2006. It's been a very long time and I didn't date anything, but it's been a long time. Um, this was designed for an iPhone 4, so a 6 is just a little bit too big. And you know what? Let me go get my phone and I'll be right back. Okay, so I designed this back when I had an iPhone 4, whenever that was. <laughs> um, and um, it worked great. It's a little bit too short for my iPhone 6. You can see it hangs out above the top about an inch. Um, it would work, but it looks funny. But it fits great for an iPhone 4 or an iPod. If you have an old-fashioned iPod, this fits in here great the way it is. Okay, this is my iPod. Yes, I know it's old. It's like an antique already, right? I love it, though. It works great. Um, it fits in here really well. In fact, my husband has one of these he uses for his iPod. You can roll up the earbuds. And they fit in the pocket back here. And you can use it for storage for your iPod. It was not, however, designed for this. This was like a secondary thought. What it was designed for is on those days, specifically for me, and I, this is why I say it might be even earlier than 2006, I don't remember, but those days when you're, say, picking your kid up at school, you really just want your phone, your ID, a little cash, and your keys. You don't want to bring your whole purse. That's what this was designed for. So in here, you can put your phone and your ID, whatever necessary cards you need to take, close the flap securely, and there's a back pocket to stick a little bit of ca paper cash in, and it has a hook here on the side. You could hook your keys to. If you are putting it in your handbag, you could hook this around that strap of your handbag and put it inside your bag so it won't float to the bottom. You also can just, of course, put it around your wrist, hook it to your belt loops. I do know people who do that, a couple of people who do that. I know that's not super attractive. But anyway, these it's a really handy, versatile little bag. I even in my day made a few with a really long strap that you could put over your head and one shoulder and then just have this hanging on your side. That works too. So I'm going to share the pattern with you all in its original form and with notes from me on how I think you should make it for an, if you have a larger phone like an iPhone 6. Once you get used to making it, you can size it up or down for whatever phone or situation that you are needing to have it accommodate. Put my iPod over there out of the way. Um, and I, So I'm going to show you how to make these. They're pretty quick and easy to make, not too complicated. I guess I should put that away too. And this is going to be a PDF download. There will be a link in the video description. I already have to make some corrections because you notice my whiteout right here. Um, but yes, I will make those on the PDF. And the drawings are for the original size of the cell phone bag. So when you're cutting it out, if you have a larger phone, you're going to want to follow my instructions for sizing it up. Okay? I do also have the um, instructions for both the regular strap that we're going to make and the longer one if you want to make the longer one. All right, let's get going. So these are my original patterns that I used a lot. So what I suggest if you're going to make more than one or two of these that you take the pattern and you transfer it to some kind of cardboard, a cereal box, poster board, something more sturdy than the paper. Uh, this will make it very quick and easy for you to cut a whole bunch of them out, say if you're going to do a craft show or something. And that's okay with me if you do, by the way. All right. 
I recommend that you get fat quarters. Um, these are found in the quilting department or cotton fabric department of your local store. There we go. And they look just like this. Now it's a half of a half of a yard. What does that mean? I know somebody's going to ask. So rather than going to the fabric store and to the cutting table and have them cut you a quarter of a yard, which is going to be about this wide, where my fingers are, and just a long strip the width of the fabric. You could do that, but I like fat quarters because it's a big square. So they cut you a full half of a yard, which is this wide, and then they split it down the fold. And you get one piece of that. And it looks like this. Nice big square piece of fabric. So you're going to need two of these. You're going to need one pretty one for the outside and one more plain one for the inside. You of course could do pretty on both sides if that's what you want to do. You don't have to. And I almost always chose something plain for the inside. So in this case we have this pretty one uh, with the pretty color blue, pink, and green leaves on it. So we'll use that one. And I have another one I've cut out already that I'll show you. They always come with these pieces of cardboard which you could save or not. I've got like five million of them now at this point. All right. Uh, here is my inside that I'm going to use. Now these are not padded. There's no interfacing. There's no cushion. These aren't meant to prevent your phone or your device from breaking. They're literally intended to be a small little take with you bag instead of carrying your big handbag around. That's what it's meant for. Okay, we're going to line up our edges as best we can and smooth it out flat. And then when I was making these for shows, I would line these up on the, on the fabric and I would trace, literally trace them out with a sharpie and then cut a bunch of them out. I've already cut and remeasured, readjusted the size of these to accommodate an iPhone 6. And this is the other fabric that we're going to do. This is the outside and this is the inside. So I'm going to take the pieces I've already cut out. I'm going to line them up here. Now your pieces also don't have to be exact if they're, you know, a little bit bigger. Bigger is better than smaller. <laughs> Try not to have them be smaller. Yeah, that works. <clears throat> okay, and I'm going to... Literally on this second one, I'm not going to even write, I'm not going to even trace it. I'm going to just line it up and cut it out. These are my fabric scissors. It's best if you have scissors that are dedicated to fabric. Paper will dull them very quickly. That's the bag body. This is the back pocket. <clears throat> Let me put this over here. Now for the strap, I do cut two pieces to give it a little extra strength. If you're carrying it around on your wrist or something, there's a lot of pressure on the strap. Um, so it doesn't hurt to have that extra thickness. So I'll cut one out each of the outside fabric and the lining. You don't have to do this part. You can just put, do it of the outside. I've always done it of both fabrics. Okay, And then we have the flap that keeps it closed. take this and set it aside. We won't need that anymore. Alrighty, we will need the sewing machine. And depending on what fabric you've chosen, oh, this thread is making me crazy. It's out here over here. 
Um, pick a thread, a neutral colored thread that goes with your fabric. If it has a white background, then I would recommend using white thread. If it's got a black background, use black thread. You can use a contrasting color of thread that's going to really show up against the fabric, but then your stitches kind of have to be a little bit neater. Um, I am going to go ahead and just be brave, and I'm going to use the thread that's in my machine, which happens to be turquoise. And so we're going to put that right here off to the side. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm going to sew these one after the other without cutting the thread. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So here are my two bag flaps. And you're going to take your bag flap and you're going to sew down one long edge, across one short edge, and up the other long edge, you're going to leave one short edge open. Put right sides of your fabric together before you sew so that the pretty side is inside and the um, back side of the fabric is sticking out. Use a smallish stitch length, straight stitch. Make sure to go hold your threads, go backwards and forwards at least once at the beginning and the end. You can use a little seam allowance. I'm lining up the edge of the fabric with the outside of the presser foot. I'm going to show you what I mean in just a second. Okay, can you see there that the outside of the fabric is right about at the outside of the presser foot? That gives you about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's all you need for the whole project, okay? All right, we'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to take our bag <coughs> pocket. And on one of the shorter ends, we're going to put right sides together again. And we're going to sew straight across one of the shorter ends only. Okay. Again, we're going to go backwards and forwards at the beginning and the end. Stuff's falling on my table. <laughs> All right, so we'll do this like that. Okay, and then we're going to take our bag, the body of our bag, the big piece, and we're going to sew across the two short ends only. <clears throat> Again, we're going to put the right sides together. and then sew across those two short ends. And I'm going to try to show you what I am doing with all the different pieces and not cutting them apart. Okay, so here are here's our like strip of pieces. I have one bag flap, another bag flap, one pocket, the next pocket, and I'm not cutting the thread. I'm going a few stitches back from the piece I just sewn, sewed, and I'm going to put my bag body up underneath the presser foot here. Because I'm doing it this way, I don't have to th hold the threads every time. I'm going to go back and forth. Back and forth. Then I'm going to take the piece, not going to cut any threads, I'm going to bring the other short end of the bag body up around so it goes underneath the presser foot. And I would do like 25 of these at a time doing them this way. This is sort of an assembly line way of sewing a bunch of the same thing. <coughs> this is the other one. And then we're still not going to cut anything. 
we're going to take our strap pieces and this time we're going to have our pretty side of our fabric facing out and I'm going to fold it towards one side towards the center the other side towards the center and then in half now of course you could press this before you do this if you would like to I'm probably not going to do that I don't remember ever pressing it first I might have but it's probably safer if you do okay and we're gonna go forward and back at the beginning and the end just like always I'm gonna pull the fabric kind of taut and fold it down low and then I'm gonna just tuck this in so all the edges are in and I'm sewing um, you know about an eighth of an inch uh, eighth of an inch away from the um, folded edge of this fabric strap Okay, so again, we're going to put the pretty fabric out, fold it in on one side towards the middle, in on the other side towards the middle, and then fold those two folded edges until they meet. And we will get it started under the presser foot. Stop with the needle down, pull your fabric taut, and then fold the two cut edges towards the center, and then fold them so they meet and then tuck all this business in. There we go. Okay, now we can cut our threads. So I'm going to move the camera so we're overhead again, and I'm gonna show you cutting everything apart, and we're gonna get out the iron, because now we have to do some pressing. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, here we're at my table still. I have a tabletop pressing board here out, and the iron is heating up. And we are going to cut our pieces apart. So we basically have one long string of sewn pieces. <laughs> So we're gonna cut our pieces apart right where the threads are in between the pieces. So we've got our two straps, two bag bodies, two pockets, and two flaps. And then I'm gonna take that first flap and cut those long strings off. Okay. Then on the two flaps, because on the flaps you have these corners that you've sewn right here, you want to take the bulk of that fabric off. Well, let me zoom in. It's easier than holding it up. Okay, so I'm going to show you on this one because I think it's easier to see. So right here where you have this corner, you want to take some of this fabric off or when you turn it out you're going to get a funny corner. It's not going to be very square. So you want to cut it out. Just leave just a hair worth of fabric on there. Be careful not to cut the stitches. You just want to cut it close. Like that. Where's the other one? See mine camera? There, frame. there we go. Okay, now let's see, I need, this is, now I always, I still have this in my, in my stash of stuff, um, let me zoom out, oops, wrong way, so I still have this in my stash of stuff, this is my turner, it's an old knitting needle, I long ago lost the mate to it, it's a number 11 knitting needle, and it, but it works great for poking out the corners. Just be careful. Don't poke them too much so that you poke the fabric out. I use the blunt end to poke the majority of the fabric out. And then I use the pointy end to push out the corners. Gently. I have been known to be in a hurry and, and 
poke a hole right through the fabric. It's been known to happen. <laughs> More than once. You'd think I would have learned the first time, but no. So just make sure it's all poked out well. And you want to do that to both of them. This is the kind of project if you're making a lot of them, um, um, just turn up the music, your favorite tunes, really loud, and just go to town on your sewing machine. Okay. Alrighty. So now we're going to press everything flat. So I'm going to make sure that it's all pushed out properly. Okay. Those are the two hardest pieces, all right? So we're going to press that flat. We're going to take our bag pockets and we're going to press these folds out of the fabric, which you could do before you get started. I'm usually too lazy. I'm going to push the whole seam allowance towards the pretty fabric. Then I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to fold it right where, the, right where those two fabrics meet so that the plain fabric is hidden. It's not sticking up out of the top. We want to only see the pretty fabric from the right side, which we do. I'm going to do that to the other one. My iron doesn't have any water in it, so there's no steam because I was using it to melt melt things with. This is my crafting iron. Um, you probably would ha have a little better time if you used a steam in your iron. It's not a requirement. Actually, I take that back. There is a little bit of water in here. So this is the bag body. And we're going to turn the whole thing right side out. We're going to take our we're going to take our loop of fabric here. We're going to reach inside with the iron and we are going to hold this firmly and push that seam allowance towards the pretty fabric. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, and then fold it This way. Let's see, I do have water in here, so let's put the steam on. Oh. There we go. Alright. And then we're going to fold those down right at the seam where those two fabrics meet. You do want to have your plain fabric be coordinating and that way when you're doing your pressing if any of it shows um, it coordinates with the pattern. The idea is that none of it shows though. All right here's the other one. These were always a good seller at all the shows I did. I did have the occasional people come and take pictures of them. And then years later, I was at a store and there was some manufacturer from China somewhere that, funny enough, had the exact same bag. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> so I don't know if those two things were related, but I found it interesting. Okay, and then on our two straps, we're going to just now give them a press. They're already sewn, so this is just to make them look a little nicer. 
and uncurl them a little bit. Okay, turn my iron off. And I am going to get the sewing machine back over here and I'll be right back. Okay, the other things that you're gonna need to finish this project, you're gonna still need your scissors and your pokey tool, but you're going to need four little pieces of Velcro about an inch, inch and a half long. You're going to need two split rings, one for, well, one for each bag. I should say you only need two pieces of Velcro per bag. I'm making two bags, so I need four. I need one split ring for each bag, and these split rings are not very big. They are three quarters of an inch. And then I have one swivel hook for each bag, right? These items are listed on the pattern notes, on the margin of the pattern. Okay, so I think we're ready. We're gonna put the two straps aside for the moment and the two bag bodies. We are gonna take our pockets. I'm going to take one side of the Velcro, this is probably the soft side, and I'm gonna eyeball it and stick it into the middle of this edge that I've sewn and pressed and sew it down. do the other one without cutting the threads apart. Now this is definitely how I did it when I did a whole bunch of them for a show. I didn't ever just do one at a time. When you're sewing the little piece of Velcro on you want to go around all four corners and when you stop at the corner stop with the needle down and that'll give you a nice sharp edge and Make sure to go backwards and forwards at the beginning and the end. And then when you take it off, you'll have, you know, this. So you want to cut all those threads. Right? I really should have my reading glasses on for this and I don't. That's probably not good. Okay, so we've got those and those are all sewn. Kind of, I have like hanging threads. What is with all these hanging threads? Okay, drive me crazy. All right. So now we are going to take our bag body and we are going to fold it in half, matching up our two folded, uh, sewn and pressed edges here. And we are going to just finger press it. You just want to finger press it and mark it. You could put a little, a little clip or something. I'm not going to do that. And then I'm going to take the coordinating pocket and I'm going to lay it pretty side face down on the right over that fold, about a quarter of an inch over the fold. Right? You could pin this. That, nothing wrong with that. It's probably good that you do pin it. You're going to flip it over and right along where you made that finger press fold is where you're going to sew. Let me do this one and then I'll show you what I mean. threads. So we sewed straight across where that fold is. 
We're going to flip this back over and now we've got the start of having our pocket on there. Yeah. So before I sew the coordinating piece of Velcro here, which we're going to do, I'm going to do the other pocket. Just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be exact. But if you're unsure about keeping it holded, held down, hold it down, that's not a word, held down, pin it. Just don't sew over the pins, take them out as you're sewing before they go underneath the needle. Okay, so here's our other one. And how I sew the coordinating piece of Velcro on, it's very low-tech. <laughs> so I pull this up where it's supposed to be and stick my finger under there, line up the Velcro, hold it down, and stitch it on. Again, you could pin it. I don't recommend gluing the Velcro because there's going to be a lot of stress and pressure on the Velcro being open and closed a lot. So stitching is really going to hold well, glue will not. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing to this one. It's been a while since I made these, but I used to make, be able to make four or five of these in an hour or more. And we're doing this video in real time. I'm really not doing anything that's off camera. This is going to end up being a longer video, so you'll get a real time idea of how long it took me um, to make these other than, you know, pulling out the iron and stuff like that, but the actual working time. So there's one. Cut all these crazy threads. You don't want to, this is not a mixed media project. You don't want all the, you don't want the threads to stay hanging there. It's not, on this particular project, you don't want that. All right, so we're going to then pull this up, stick it down. There we go. We've got the start of our pocket. Okay. So now we're going to do the flap. So the idea behind this sewing project and lots of projects I've designed over the years that are sewing project is that are bag projects is to get all the elements on it and coordinated before you sew the bag together. It's easier that way. So we are going to take our pieces of Velcro again and I'm going to line it up about a half an inch from this short edge and centered between the two long edges like about like that. We're going to sew it down. Go back and forwards again like you did at the beginning of uh, the end like you did with the other piece of Velcro. Stopping with your needle in the down position in the corners. You could measure it if you want this to be exactly centered. I never do that. <laughs> but, but you definitely could. There's no reason why you can't. You can also uh, put, you know, a little piece of applique over the Velcro so you don't see the stitching. You could put, I used to bead some of the flaps um, and that looked really pretty. You could do hand stitching embroidery. There's a bunch of things you could do if you don't want to see the stitching here where the Velcro is, yeah? I'm just going to show you the plain bag. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our two flaps. So before we can sew the coordinating piece of Velcro on here, like with the pocket, we need to get it attached to the body. So this is how we do this. The, the back of the flap is attached to the same side as the pocket. So I'm going to take my flap, I'm going to lay it right sides together with the bag body. I'm going to line it up here in about the center. 
with the cut edge just slightly hanging over that sewn folded pressed edge. And I'm going to stitch it down. And I'm actually going to move the camera because I think you need to see this how I'm going to do this. Okay, crapola, you all you missed all that. I was talking to the camera and you all missed it. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I said I was going to do this in real time. All right. So I'm going to give this a trim. I'm going to have to talk you through it. All right, so you start with your flap this way on the edge where your pocket is. You line it up with the, fo the folded sewn edge up here of your bag body, hang it off just a little bit, and you stitch, start with going backward and forward, stitch all the way across. Stop one stitch off of the edge of the flap. With the needle down in the fabric, sticking in the fabric, turn it around, It'll be this way, you can turn it around, flip your flap over, tuck it under the presser foot so it'll look like this, and come back over that folded edge and go backwards and forwards when you get to the end. And that way, when you do it that way, it's on there really strong and tightly, and it's nice and neat and top stitched. And then trim that excess off that I just did. Do that to both of them so they both look like this. Yes? This is what happens when you forget to turn the camera on. All right. Now we are going to put the other piece of Velcro on. So I'm going to switch camera angles again. Okay. So now we've got our two bag bodies with the uh, flaps on them and the pockets too. So you want to take your cell phone bag and you want to meet the two folded sewn edges of the bag at the top. Pull your flap down. <clears throat> Don't pull it too tightly like this because your bag is going to be um, thick and bulky and you might stick you know, your ID in there, maybe your ATM card. So you wanna allow for some bulk to be in there. And if it's too tight, then your bag's not gonna close. I'm gonna turn the viewfinder so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Okay, so I always leave about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so, or half an inch up here above the folds of the bag. See how it's sticking up right here? So I always have like that. So I'm going to line this up here, just like I did with the other piece of Velcro. I'm going to stick this here where that other one sits. And I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to just hold it down with my fingers, and then I'm going to go sew it down. You could pin it. If you're not used to sewing, you're not used to doing this kind of sewing, pin it down. the threads off. And you'll have this. Okay? Let's do the other one. So again, we're going to line up these two big folded edges up here. We're going to pull this down to about there. I'm going to put this in here and then sew it down. Okay, so now we have two bags that look like this. So now you can take this, put it up here, attach the flap to the Velcro, 
do that to both of them. Okay. Now we're going to take those two straps. Remember those straps we started with? We're going to cut a couple inches off of one end. Just like that. All right. We are going to put the split ring on that little piece we just cut off. And I'm going to show you how to put the bag together. So you're going to take the split ring. And I always put the split ring on the right side of the bag when it was facing me. And I always put it just at about where the top of the pocket went. Um, have it sticking out quite a bit. You only want to feel about a quarter to a half an inch inside the bag and you're going to have it just like this. I know that somebody out there is going to go, what? Yeah, just trust me, okay? So we're going to sew a quarter of an inch down, seam allowance. We're going to line this edge up with the edge of the presser foot and we're going to sew this down. Except I ran out of bobbin thread, so hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, now the bobbin thread's all, all wound back up again. So let's try this again. We're going to sew all the way down here about a quarter inch from this cut edge right here. You want to make sure your little bit like this that's from your split ring is in there like about a half an inch or so. Okay, so we're gonna, again, I'm gonna fold this in half like that. I'm going to take my bag. I'm gonna stick it in here right at about where the pocket is on the back about that far, about a half an inch from the cut edge of the fabric. And we're going to stitch that down. Okay, then we're going to cut all these threads off. And it should look like that. Okay? We're going to take the other side and we're going to sew the other long piece of strap in at about the same place, right about where the pocket meets on the other side of the bag. I'm going to do the same thing. fabric for these bags. Um, you can use other kinds of fabric, but the cotton's real easy to work with. Okay. Now we've got the other side. Cut all the threads. All right. So we've got our two bags. They look like this. Okay. Let's zoom in. At the bottom edge here, we need to do the same thing we did on the flap. We have lots of extra fabric down here. If we don't cut it, the corners at the bottom are going to be weird. So you need to get rid of some of this extra bulk of fabric by stopping, you know, just like a sixteenth of an inch or something from the stitches and, and angle it up and clip it off. Then you need to cut some of this extra fabric off too. Don't cut the stitches and don't cut the loop you put on there. So when you get up to the split ring or your strap on the other side, lift up the fabric so you're only cutting the one layer of fabric and then pull the split ring back and cut the back side like that. Yes, then do the other. I'm going to do both sides. Ok, 
okay, make sure I'm in frame in case it wasn't last time because I wasn't looking. <laughs> right? So lift, pull the strap back so you're on, only cutting through one side of the bag and trim that extra bulk off and then pull that flap back towards you, the strap, and then trip the, trim the other side. Okay? So you don't cut your straps off or you don't cut your loop off and you end up with something that looks like that. Okay? So I'm going to do the other one so you can see it again. So we're going to clip the corner off. And then we're going to trim the seam allowance. And we're going to go up to the strap where the split ring is, but we're going to stop cutting and we're going to pull up that top layer of fabric and cut it and not the loop where the ring is at. Okay, then we're going to pull that loop where the ring is at towards us and we're going to go get that back side of that fabric. I'm going to flip it over and do the other side of the bag. Again, we're going to pull that top layer of fabric off and just trim it and not the strap. Then pull the strap out of the way so you can get the back side of the fabric. Okay, just like that. So now you have two bags, oh, zoom out, that look like this, nice and trimmed and nice and neat, yes? All right, so now we're gonna need that knitting needle again. Remember I talked about that knitting needle? All right, so we're gonna take our bag, and open it up, take that knitting needle, and we are gonna turn it inside out. Gonna poke out the corners as good as you can. You did cut the bulk of the fabric um, away, so you should be able to do a fairly decent job poking the corners out and getting them square, pretty square. So your your bag should look like that. Okay, let's do the other one. out gently I don't want to poke through the fabric I have done that okay now when we're gonna sew up these side seams again but as you do you don't want to sew on this you're gonna break a needle you're gonna do something weird with it you don't want so you want to make sure when you get to this part that you pull this ring out and it's all the way way out here so that you can sew over here and you won't catch the ring or break your needle okay that's kind of really important all right, so we're gonna line up our edge and I'm gonna sew, again, about a quarter of an inch, same seam allowance I've been using, so I'm gonna line this edge up with the edge of the presser foot and sew from here all the way up to here. And I'm gonna back stitch at the top and the bottom. I'm going to do this one too. Pull, pull, pull that seam out. Okay, trim all the threads. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now when you do the other side, you want to make sure that you just pull this other strap out and it's flat and it's not twisted when you sew it down. Yes, so you just want to have it be flat and have it not be twisted. And kind of feel around and feel your fabric and make sure there's no weird funny folds that you're feeling in there and that everything's pulled out smooth and flat. We're almost 
almost done. All right. So again, we've got them hooked together because I did them one after the other. I'm going to trim all the threads. Okay, and see these? We're going to trim these off. We don't need those on there. So on both bags, just trim them off. Give them a good whack. Oop, one piece went flying. <laughs> I don't know where they went. Went back that way somewhere. All right. I don't know where. Oh, there it is. All right. So we're going to still need that knitting needle again. So now we have to turn our little bags right side out. <clears throat> so we're going to use the blunt end to force it most of the way out. There we go. And then the pointy end to poke out the corners. There we go. I see a thread that I missed last time. So there we go, there's one bag. And it seems like you're like always finding threads. Like, I don't know, when I do sewing projects, it seems like it's like endless thread city. Okay, so we'll turn this one out. There we go. Now, if you're going to do these with really long straps, um, then you're going to need a bigger piece of fabric because the long strap you need 52 inches. So you may want to get a full half of a yard of fabric from your fabric store to do that. Now I'm going to now put the split rings on and we take our long strap and you put the split ring on, fold it once and then twice, pull the ring down to the edge and sew it right about here. Go back and forth four or five or six times. Okay, and then you can hook it over here. Now hopefully you've done your job and your phone will fit in these. If it doesn't then you did too big of a seam allowance, but the good news is you can go in and rip it out and, and make it wider. This one looks like it came out a little skinny, but let's find out live on camera. Oh no, it fits. And that's with a case on. Um, so your phone fits in there. You could slip ID in there. I usually always put my ID and money out here in the outer pocket. Um, you could make it a little wider. You could make it a little longer. Um, but they are really fun cases. And you can see by resizing it that um, the iPhone 6 fits very well in it. If you feel like it's a little tight for you because you want to carry more stuff in here than just your phone and like your ID, um, then you definitely can do that. Just make the pattern piece a little wider when you cut your, cut your fabric out. So I hope you all have fun with that. If you want to um, be a member of one of my Facebook groups or shop in my Etsy shop, send me happy mail, ask me questions via email, all the info information for how to do any of those things along with the link for the pattern for this is are in the description below so go check it out and don't forget the most important thing have a good day do something nice for yourself because you deserve it and i'll see you later bye guys